Hey guys, welcome to Wheeler Lake, a more uh, difficult Colorado off-road trail. And we're up here uh, just scouting it out because we hope to do it next year. This year there's a massive snowstorm coming in and we just want to come here before well, the snow hits and probably closes it and kind of talk about how we've done this year with our long-term Gladiator project truck. Now the cool thing about this Wheeler Lake, uh, start of the Wheeler Lake trail is you get to go under this mine. It's kind of iconic. And you really need a built rig to come here. Uh, and the reason is simple. It gets pretty technical pretty quick, as you can see right there. And we're not going to go to Wheeler Lake today because, well, this year we're just here scouting it out, uh, hopefully for next year. So Tommy's going to come up here and uh, park it up for a beauty shot. There he goes. We're going to talk about kind of the capabilities of this truck and let you know how, uh, after owning it for well, most of the year, how happy we are about it or unhappy. Hey, dude. How's it going? Good. Hey, show him our truck dog. Let the truck dog out. Although there was a sign yeah? that said no dog pooping. Oh, is it? Okay, well, hey, Blaze. Blaze, no, no, pooping. no pooping, boy. This is our new addition to Team TFL. This is Blaze, the Bernese Mountain Dog. And he's going to love it in about, what, a couple of hours when the snow comes? <laughs> hey, Ber hey Blazy. So, Tommy, I'm, I'm telling him we're just scouting, um, you know, the trail for next year. We're not going to do it this year uh, because it's, well, it's already 4 o'clock. And uh, this is not a trail you want to take on when the sun goes down, at least not us. I think Onyx Off-Road raced it at a... Like a seven out of ten? It's pretty hard. Yeah, did you see the path? Did you see it? Yeah, cool. it looks pretty rocky. Yeah, so uh, I was going to say this is kind of our uh, update on uh, what we think of uh, the Gladiator. Now, I got to tell you, this is one of the favorite rigs that we've done. Over the years, we've done a lot of different Jeeps, a bunch of cheap Jeeps. Uh, this one is not cheap by any means. Uh, but let's talk about kind of, you know, how many miles we have, what we've done with it, uh, and uh, whether we're happy with it or not. Well, we've got a full update, actually, on the Jeep comparing it to the... Rebel. Yeah. That's coming up soon, but um, 8,000 miles on it. It's a 2020 uh, Gladiator Rubicon, and it's got all sorts of Mopar mods. So it's got the uh, two inch Mopar lift, it's got the Mopar Fox shocks, uh, it's got the modular front bumper with the worn winch and the aftermarket lights, it's got the snorkel, which looks brilliant. Haven't used it for anything in the real world, but it's been a really fun Jeep. I would say it's a much better Jeep than it is truck. Uh, but if you're looking for a Wrangler with more storage capacity, some more okay. payload, it's perfect. Wait, what do you mean by that? It's a much better Jeep than it is a truck. It's just the bed's pretty small. It doesn't tow all that well because it's got the 3.6 Pentastar and up here. It's, it's a little bit, you know, pokey up the hills, especially when you lift it. But in terms of capability, solid axles, locking differentials, sway bar disconnect, like from the factory and even modified, you're not going to find anything much better. You know, the one thing that uh, I'm really happy about is Mopar obviously gave us these parts uh, to promote their aftermarket business, right? Yep. Actually, um, you know, quite a lot of parts. Uh, and uh, I've been watching a lot of kind of older Jeeps and, you know, you kind of get what you pay for, right? Uh, the cool thing here is there's no rust anywhere, right? There's no corrosion. It all looks like it's from the factory and whenever people lift or upgrade their uh jeeps oftentimes what you'll see is they're using well budget parts right and then quickly what happens is like i don't know how many jeeps i've seen where these brackets become completely uh rusted and yucky uh and here everything we've put on this um you know no rust no uh no no problems no everything the one thing that you know Blazer Wonder Dog has done is made a mess in the back seat, but that's the cool thing, right? Because you can, you can just take it all out and hose it out. Wipe it off, exactly. Yeah, and this has gotten a lot of off-road use. I would say this has gone off-road more than most. So we've talked a lot about the tops, how cool it is you can pull it off. The same thing with the doors. The funny thing is, I don't think we've actually ever pulled everything off, just because it's, I don't know. In some cases, it's just more comfortable and more refined having everything attached. But if you're a uh, if you're a real hardcore Jeep guy, you can pull everything off and pull the windshield down. It's nice to have that option. And the other thing about the, uh, the Gladiator is it's uh, very easy to modify. So there's tons and tons of companies, not just Mopar, but if you're looking for other lift kits or axle swaps or whatever you want, it's all out there. 
And you can't necessarily say that about like a Ranger. There's just a much bigger aftermarket community around Jeeps than there is around, you know, Colorado or um, uh, Tacoma's pretty big, but like Ranger. Yeah, let's talk about the most uh, controversial part. And that is, of course, those, Tommy. So tell me about those and why we decided to go with those. I'm not talking about the wheels. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about the tires or wheels. Uh, these are the uh, steel wheels that you find factory as a spare, t as spare well, wheel. I'll show them where they're hiding. Yep. Yeah, they're hiding. Blaze, you are... You are uh, getting in the way here, boy. They're hiding right under there. Uh-oh. He's doing wheeler. So that, so that is a spare tire uh, that comes with, yeah. <laughs> we interrupt this program for a little blaze moment. <laughs> How far did you make it to the lake? My all trails at 3.3 miles. Yeah. It's good. Not bad. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. All right, let's get back to the program at large. So every Gladiator comes with those wheels. We just got four of them and stuck them on the Gladiator. Tommy, what about our little rock star rack and our roof tent? This is um really cool. So it's a, it's a Colorado-based company called Rack Stars that does this. Uh, and it's super secure, so a lot of them are only secured in like two cross members. This one is the full three. So the roof nest up here is just really sturdy up here on, on top of the Jeep. And then you can put on these molly panels, you can put accessories like jerry cans or shovels or whatever. The one thing I'm on the fence about though, Dad, yeah. I don't know if I like the deck system. It, you know, there's, it's, it's, it's kind of good news and bad news. Uh, the good news is, of course, you end up with kind of storage, right? Lockable storage. Lockable storage. So we've got some, you know, uh, recovery straps in there. You, you got a mess in here, dude. Yeah. Yeah, our compressor to air up. Oh, that is an expensive compressor, right, Tommy? That looks like it's uh, the best of Harbor Freight. 60 bucks. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but the downside is, for that storage, you lose all that storage. Right. So you can't really, you know, use the bed to its full or even half of its capability. Should we show them the inside? Yeah, here, why don't you do it? So inside the Gladiator, this is an expensive Jeep. This is a $55,000 uh, pickup truck. So as you'd expect, it's uh, very, very luxurious and very, very premium. So leather wrapped steering wheel, heated steering wheel, heated seats. Um, it's good. Uh, the material qualities are just so, so excellent for um, any pickup truck or even any SUV or sedan. I mean, it's just really is, they've really stepped up their game on this latest generation of Jeep. I've talked about the seats. I really dislike the seats. They're just too firm. They're not adjustable enough. Uh, there's just not, it's just a bummer. Like there's lumbar support here in the driver's side, but not on the passenger side. I don't understand why, but Uconnect works extremely well. Uconnect is really fast, really easy to use. The navigation's good. Um, we installed the auxiliary switches here to power the Mopar light so you never have to drill into your dash. Lockers are much easier to actuate than you'd find on like the JK Wranglers. 8-speed automatic in this one because our videographers drive it, but if you are a diehard manual fan, you can get the 6-speed manual. So apart from the seats uh, and the fact they don't go back far enough inside, it's really nice. Hey, Blaze is uh, thirsty. Let him show him the coolest dog accessory we got from Oh yeah, this is our, our little accessory, our... Our guy Alex gave Blaze. Where'd he go? Come here, Blaze. We got this from our videographer Alex. Check this out, dude. You just push on it. No, not the camera. <laughs> He's thirsty. <laughs> yeah, that's a cool little thing. Yeah, and then you let go. Let me show you. Let me show you how that works. So you got a little water bottle here, and then you squeeze, and the water comes pouring in, and you let go, and it comes back down the drain. It sucks it back up. Yeah, but but overall, it's it's been a, a fantastic Jeep to live with. We do drive it pretty hard, and we've had no issues to report. It's it's a little bit slow. <laughs> it's the only way for it. You know, when you get up here to nine, ten thousand feet of elevation, and you start tackling some of the highway passes that are sixty-five, seventy-five, that little Pentastar just screams to keep up with traffic, and I wouldn't want to tow with it with the lift. At least I wouldn't want to tow anything over a couple thousand pounds. But, you know, I like the Pentastar because it's proven itself to be reliable as much as people in the comment section are going to perhaps throw a fit about that. It is. It's been around since 2012 in the Jeep family. It's really well sorted. It's very basic. Oh. oh. Look at the this little guy. Dog of a million kisses. Dog of a million kisses. Of a million kisses. 
<laughs> but yeah, the Pentastar is great. I mean, they have the new Eco Diesel, which is becoming an option now in the Gladiator. I would still get the, the V6 gas engine because says, uh, hey, there's no way to put it. The early gen Eco Diesels had a lot of issues. And I'm, the new one is supposedly all new, but I'm still a little hesitant on it. So gas, gladiator, manual or automatic, doesn't matter. Rubicon only if you need the lockers. For 90% of people, you probably don't. Save the money and get a sport and then lift it and put cool wheels and tires on it. Yeah, then make it your own because they really are like the Lego bricks of the pickup truck world. What's he doing over here? He's, uh, well, he's, uh, he's giving me a million kisses. That's what he's doing. A million kisses. Well, guys... This is kind of an end of the year wrap up for the Jeep. Uh, with 14 inches of snow coming, uh, we don't like to wheel in the snow. I mean, you can, but uh, it gets really sketchy. Uh, so, you know, the good news is um, that means it's the start of Moab season, right? Yeah, because Moab usually stays pretty snow, somewhat snow free. Until at least December. So I, I suspect we'll be heading out to Moab to take on some classic. Uh, uh, areas there and uh tommy are we gonna hold on to this jeep you like it that much i hope so yeah. i really do like it yeah it's ex it's an expensive asset 55 grand a lot of money and with the mods it's probably closer to seventy thousand dollars but yeah it's still the best my favorite mid-size truck just because it's so fun to play without in the dirt yeah so we bought you know a mid-size a full-size <laughs> he's looking in my pocket <laughs> and, and a full-size with the silverado and the heavy duty and we're probably going to be you know toward the end of the year selling the uh F-250 with the Godzilla engine and of course the Silverado. So we'll let you know about that if you're interested because uh, it's time to move on to a new crop of vehicles to test for next year. But I think this guy we're gonna hold on to. He's, well, he's, she's, it's just a very special vehicle and you're just a very special dog, aren't you, Blazy? Oh, yes, you are. As always, this is Roman. Yep, and Tommy, check out tflcar.com, tfltruck.com and tfloffroad.com for your number one source of New car and truck adventures and reviews. We'll see you next time. Look at this cool mine. Way cool.